Imagine being able to smell virtual reality. You put on your VR headset and stroll down the boardwalk with friends. The sweet scents of cotton candy and buttery popcorn infiltrates your senses and you are wrapped in a warm blanket of scents from childhood memories. The sense of smell will bring VR to an entirely new level of immersion and the company Haptic Soul is doing just that. Hi, welcome to the second episode of our new talk show, VRT. Today we have Peter Sassman, the CEO and founder of Haptic Soul, which makes the VR sense. And yes, that is exactly what Linus Tech Tips had on his video. Peter, would you like to introduce Hello. yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, Peter Sassman, president and co-founder of Haptic Solutions. And yeah, we at Haptic Solutions make devices to help address more sense in your virtual worlds, uh, whether that be smell, touch, or beyond. Every time I've mentioned your company to my friends, they like to smell virtual reality. It's a really wild concept. So I'm wondering, how did you come up with this idea? Where did this all come from? Back pre-DevKit 1 VR uh, Oculus Rift Kickstarter. I was watching Sorter Online, probably like many of the oh gosh, viewers. Um, and at the time, like I was like, what should we do to do it? Uh, but then subsequently read the book Ready Player One, uh, where I saw, hey, you know, this stuff's kind of you know plausible. We could do it with more practical haptics and whatnot. Uh, and then of course the dev kit one rift kickstarter happened um maybe like i could throw my hat in the ring and start you know working on filling in the different areas uh to bring a deeper level of immersion uh to vr later on i had a project i needed to do uh for like an electrical class and i was like oh, maybe i could start on something else so i i was like what's something else that was in ready player one and uh, smell was one of the senses mentioned in Ready Player One. So I made something like heating up test tubes and trying to like, you know, move valves and uh, blow the smell with a big fan. And uh, it, it didn't work too great, but like the, the, the parts functioned and whatnot. Uh, towards the end of that semester, some people were like, hey, have you ever thought about like, you know, what you put in a car vent you have scent clips and I'm like, oh, maybe there's something to that so the the spring after that semester i on a weekend basically 3d printed this this cake design 3d printed this case uh using like blender and 3d printers at the local dallas maker space uh got some fans from the you know kind of discount electronics resale store uh an arduino uh, and some like custom, you know, solder some uh, transistors or that on, and then car vent clips. Use the laser cutter at the maker space with just a kind of a basic design, and yeah, it worked pretty great. Uh, so since then, just kind of kept evolving the idea. That's awesome. Okay, so you touched on a lot of items. The first one, it seems like you talked a lot about Ready Player One. So this was absolutely right. inspired by Ready Player One. Yeah, definitely. I'd say like even, uh, yeah, in the early days that was like pointed out by all the companies, Oculus and others as the roadmap. Uh, like this book is like required reading. Like you need to know what required hardware uh, we need to, you know, fulfill the dreams of the metaverse that were even envisioned back as early as like Snow Crash uh, by Neil Stevenson and, uh, you know, some of those other books. So. Which, okay, so you said that in the book they mentioned smells. Is there a specific part of the book that they mentioned that? Uh, they mentioned like a smell tower off to the side. Um, though as they envisioned it in that world, like you pretty much have every smell. So people would actually put like stinky smells on their avatars, which would, you know, kind of convince some people to stop using it. Though we kind of wanted to remediate that in our device by you only put in the smells that you actually want to smell. Uh, mm. so that you don't have to, you know, smell stinky avatars or, you know, skunks or that. <laughs> yeah. Or zombies, you know. I think that's really amazing that you specifically looked at the space 
and looked at what everyone else was doing and looked for the hole, I guess, or what was missing that hasn't been done yet that needs to be done in order to make VR really immersive. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about the stuff that we have here. So you mentioned that this is the first project you made and you made this in one weekend. Try basically a proof of, of, of the scent stuff. Yeah, this yes. is the yeah, first of the scent stuff, yeah. Yes. So this is this was your proof of concept. Right. Which by the way, I read on here it says a new sense to, to the, the virtual, virtual world. world. I love that. That is so good. <laughs> The play I've heard on sense and sense, amazing. Okay, and then the second one you built was this one, right? Yeah, uh, at, at first in two parts, but then like yeah, eventually it became a whole unit mm -hmm. after I found a large enough 3D printer to actually print it as one piece. Can you tell us about this? You uh, mentioned this was a desktop one, right? Yeah, yeah. So this one uh, is a desk desktop uh, one, uh, basically. Well, that's how you open it. So you put this inside. Yeah. So I didn't bring those dividers today, but there is actually like a second set of dividers. We've learned since the last tech tips video to switch to PTG dividers because we can still laser it, but they're a little bit more durable. But yeah, you can either set those on top or we send us another set of dividers in the box. Put them on top or in the bottom. Uh, either. So you, uh, you can put on the top Yeah. You, and then there we send it with a, a set of dividers that have a hole. So oh. you can actually screw it onto it before sliding it in. Oh, cool. That was actually kind of a, uh, in collaboration with uh, Colin from Linus Tech Tips. He, like he was the one who's kind no. of contacted us about getting the cilia and like he had some ideas like, you know, what if you could get like the bottle lower and so we actually sell like a compact version on our website that's like a little bit shorter, but the only you can only have the bottles hanging, mm -hmm. as opposed to like in in both configurations. On this unit you can put it in both. This might just kind of be more for like if you wanted it visually to look like a little different. I see. Um, okay. And then yeah, this sense. bar here kind of yeah is still. Like in this, where you could still put like vent clips from you oh buy the gosh. store into this unit. Oh, that's what um, these are for. Right, that's right, right. Cool. Okay. In, in the compact one, that's not in there. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Right. Makes sense. It's so cool that you got contacted by Linus Tech Tips. How did that go? And what happened? And it's also amazing that Colin gave you some advice. Yeah, so it was kind of like I, I hadn't been. Uh, so during the, the pandemic started and I wasn't like selling as many cilias and um, then like I was posting you know stuff on you know socials and whatnot mm -hmm. about it and then yeah Colin saw it and was like hey we need to get that on the show and some That's people so were like cool. oh that needs to be on like kind of like the you know the side joke channel right he's like no no we need to get that on oh the main channel God. incredible <laughs> like did you freak out I would freak I mean ugh. That's incredible. So how did you react? I mean, when you got it was pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, we uh, got got the kit together. It's and, wild. And yeah, after we sent it, yeah, they had some feedback, and we you know I made the smaller one. But then part of like the continuation of that was like you know how uh, once we had some more people helping me out like on the design, like how can we evolve it into like something that like actually you can handle like when you're turning mm -hmm. around without having to have a whole bunch of these mm -hmm. around your room. So like wearable, like, yeah. yeah. I think that's okay. So I think that. that's great that they gave you feedback. Like, that's so nice of them. I honestly, I mean, that makes sense that they would do that. So we talked about this one, this one, and now the new one, this very tiny wearable. I actually had to try this earlier, it's amazing. So you hang this around your neck and yeah, it's now portable. How does this work? You said it works over Wi-Fi or network? Oh uh, yeah, so we're gonna be upgrading this one to also be able to be wireless. Okay. Um, but this one just was connected by USB to the computer. Um, but the newer board that we designed for the wearable uh, uses an ESP32 chip, which is pretty popular in the maker space right now, um, to enable it to have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi uh, as, and, as opposed to just being plugged in. Um, and then the wire you do see hanging off the side doesn't have to be connected to a computer. Um, you, can, you know, just plug it into whatever you know battery bank you want oh, yeah. type of thing. Yeah, and, so that's it's like it's extra portable. You can just now put it onto a battery bank. And be able to use this with your headset, so that's right, incredible. Right. See, it's already turned on. Yeah. The one, another really cool feature that you mentioned to me is that you can actually tilt this whole thing in order yeah. to get, like, depending yeah, on where it's sitting on your chest, 
you can have it, yeah, get it into a better angle so it's directly, directly going towards your nose. So that was really confusing. And there's some mounting holes on the back that will put like some threaded inserts in. So if you need to do like a special mounting scheme or that, um, there's also a side strap, kind of like an apron, if you need it to be a bit tighter so it's not, mm. you know, shaking around. I guess, yeah, yeah, if you were doing more intense games and you were like running around or something. Yeah, treadmill or whatnot, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, some people who've heard about this mentioned about what they'd love to use this in is like maybe zombie games or somewhere where you can like smell the pine trees, the dirt, the blood. I'm not a scary game type of person, it's so probably not for me. I got to try this in the carnival setting, so good. There was a scent of marshmallows, scent of like root beer, of popcorn. It just, it, I don't know how to explain it, but it just, it's very heartwarming. It really makes you feel, I don't know, it made me feel like I was a kid again. I just want to go everywhere, smell everything. So that's really cool. What are your visions for how you think people will use this? moving forward yeah definitely in the vr space uh, we've actually seen you know quite a few interesting use cases since the last tech tips video Tra you know training or that or like training uh, yeah like you could like tr train like the you know smell something um in, in your work or that uh oh then wow like uh, i didn't even think about that board gaming even like mm -hmm. dungeons and dragons um and uh, yeah, quite a few people were wanting it for that. You know, movies, uh, watching oh, movies with smell. That'd be so cool. uh, yeah, and uh, some other. So have people been buying you know, traditional this? gaming yeah. on, on a on a you know monitor? Mm -hmm. um, oh, escape rooms. Uh, oh. We haven't sold any for that, but like yeah, that's something people say all the time is, oh, you could put like one of these in an escape room to or like really an out of home VR you. space mm -hmm. or. You know, or advertising, or you know, like you know, have to smell your product. You know. So currently, which yeah, so currently, what is this being used for? Like, is there specific games or specific applications that your customers have been using this for? Um, so there's Adventure Climb VR is uh, supports the the original Celia. I'm sure in the future it'll support you know the, the wearable. wearable. Mm -hmm. um, what well, is this one called, by the way? The wearable. Uh, micro. Micro. micro? Yeah. And then this is just Celia. Yeah, that's just Celia. Oh, is this pre-Cilia? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the prototype Cilia. Okay. Uh, and where, where did the name Cilia come from? Just curious. Uh, so actually, and that's how we got our logo. Um, well, and this is an early kind of design I made, but the, the newer one, uh, yeah, I kind of cleaned it up a little. But like, if you Google a uh, cross-section of Cilia online, mm -hmm. and like look at the like microscope pictures of like where they're looking at like the cross-section of a cilia, which is what receives like the scent particles oh in your nose, like it looks kind of like our logo. So that's kind of where my inspiration mm -hmm. came for it. And then eventually we just use it as our company logo in addition to representing the smell device. That's actually really amazing that there's so much like thoughtfulness that went into your logo with the names. That's really cool. So it's supported in Adventure Yeah, Adventure Climb. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in uh, Mars VR, which there was a Kickstarter campaign by the same people who made uh, the Adventure Climb um, for, yeah, like having smell with the Mars experience. They're developing together so, with the okay. Mars Society. They have a Minecraft Forge mod. If you're interested in modding Minecraft, please reach out. We want to, mm -hmm. you know, continue to develop that. Um, and then, yeah, we just uh, are having Neos work with the the microcilia, and we're going to be, you know, continuing to work on getting that better up through CES. And that's right. So Peter and his team, the Haptic Soul team, are going to be at CES this year. Yes, so if you're right. going to be there, make sure to go look for them and find them. Yeah, we're going to have a, a standing experience that's going to have uh, the, the microcilia. And I don't know if it'll so be ready cool. in time, but we have something else working on that we might have. It's a secret. Um, and then uh, also we'll have like a kind of a seated desktop uh, experience. Are these available and on sale now? People want them? Um, the original Cilia is on sale right now. We may have pre-orders soon for the microcilia. We're, we're figuring that out. But definitely uh, we'd be shipping February time frame. Um, and so like look for orders kind of between now and CES time frame. 
Uh, how much do these store. go for? So uh, this is uh, currently going for 400. We only had 200, but we realized after looking back at kind of the labor and the, the cost of the parts, we needed to raise it to 400. We're, we're targeting 200 on the smaller. We still mm -hmm. work out maybe two, 250. You know, uh, it might have a little bit of wiggle there. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna have, uh, I didn't mention before, but the front cover can actually come off and have add-on modules. So we're thinking like you could also buy like an additional add-on that adds an additional eight cents for like 50 or 60 type of thing. Yeah, um, these cartridges are removable and you can have multiples of them depending on which game you're playing. So right, it's, right, it's right. very customizable and easy to pop in and out for different games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scent cartridges uh, can be very replaced. Cool. And then, yeah, it would be the same scent cartridge for like the add-on module at the front type of thing. Um, though that add-on module could also support other things like maybe blowing hot and cold air or, you know, um, controlled vibration motors or other haptic senses. So if they want to order these, they would go to your website. Uh, yeah, hapticsoul.com. And if people wanted to contact you about your products, how will they get a hold of you? Uh, you can do uh, Peter at hapticsoul.com or Twitter. We have a Discord as well, discord.hapticsoul.com. Yeah, yeah those, Great. those are good ways. Well, thank you very much for doing oh, this interview. Yeah, thank you. Your products are amazing. It's been a lot of fun. And thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Whoa, wait, where's it going? Wait, can you, yeah, hold it, hold it there. <laughs> oh, dude! Wait, wait, wait! Ah, oh. <laughs> this is crazy! <laughs> All right, let me know when you have this coming out, man. You got a customer? Uh, probably.